rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find the greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Lone Silver, let's go big fellow. I'll do it. His wife, Liz, stepped into his shoes and took over. She not only ran the cafe, but bought the gang of gun slicks who had worked secretly for Chuck. The men readily allowed Liz to take over as their leader, because she was in a position to get a line on good jobs. Her cafe was a good cover for their activities, and her ranch a safe hideout right near the town. One day in her office in back of the cafe, Liz was talking to two of the men, a tough killer named Savage and a younger man named Bill. Now, look. Since Chuck died, I've been head of the gang. And you have to admit, I've done a good job of it. You sure have, Liz. Yeah, we've all made dough working with you, Liz. I'm glad to hear you say so. And Savage, there's going to be another job tomorrow, so yeah. get the gang together. Tell them I'll meet them at my range tonight. Sure, Liz. Uh, what's the job you got lined up? One that'll be a scene. Yeah. There's a payroll coming from Pecos on the stage tomorrow. But it won't be in the strong box up on the beach. How they can. Special deputy is going to ride in the coach and bring it in his luggage bag. Uh, now I want you to get that bag and bring it here to me. How did you find out about it, Liz? I was over in Texas day before yesterday, remember? Yeah, that's right. Well, I got to be friends with that fellow who's the special deputy. Yes. He said he was making a trip here to Woodstock and asked if he could call on me. <laughs> I guess he decided I was a nice, wealthy widow worth calling on. <laughs> you sure didn't let down, eh? Yeah. You see, he confided to me that I was the only one he told about why I was coming here. So wait a minute. Uh, if you were the only one he told and we robbed him the payroll, he'll maybe remember about telling you. Yeah, I thought of that. So that's the reason you're to see he don't live to do any talking. You mean you want him killed? That's the general idea, dear. I haven't been with a gang long, Liz. And I didn't know you went in for killing. Getting squeamish, huh? I just don't like it. Fact is, you can consider I'm quitting the gang as of now. Huh? I'll go out to Ranch Bunch House and get my stuff, then I'll head south. Uh, Bill! 
I don't reckon you know what you're saying. Oh, yes, I do. That's the way it is, and I'm not going to change my mind. Maybe you don't know that nobody quits my game. <laughs> well, then I'll be the first. That's all I got to say, Liz. Nice knowing you. Come on. Uh, now, wait a minute. You, you, Hold it, Let him go. Please. You heard about the plans to hold up the stage. Yeah? And that means he's liable to stick your head in a noose as well as mine. Now, that ought to tell you what to do, Savage. You mean... But he said he was going out to the ranch right now. You follow him and put a bullet in him. You know, I sort of got to like that hombre, Liz. Uh, Look, is... you do what I tell you. Now get going. Uh, you were late. Get to your city, you're the boss. I'll get back and let you know how I'm a That same morning in the hills near Woodstock, the Lone Ranger and Toto were preparing to leave their temporary camp. The horses had been saddled, and the two men were talking as they stowed away their gear. The outlaw gang we're hunting must be hiding here with stock cut out. Uh, there are many holdups and murders during the past year. Them all happened down this way. The last job they pulled was a holdup at Liz Creston's cafe in Woodstock a week ago. Is that right? Yeah, I used to think her husband Chuck was tied in with crooks. Since he's dead and their place was robbed, Didn't I... say Liz Creston make plenty hot talk to sheriff. She blamed him for not finding outlaws. Yes, I know. Chuck, not on trail. Let's go see about it. Within a few minutes, the masked man and Indian run to the bend of the trail and saw a man lying on the ground. Look, fellow lying on the ground, Kiva Sabe. Someone must have ambushed him. Oh, 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 oh. Shot in the back. In bed? Uh, uh, try to quit the gang. Special deputy. He's gone, Cut Ah. Him speak of trying to quit gang. Mention special deputy. He must have been with the outlaw gang. But if he was shot by a deputy, the man who shot him wouldn't leave. That's right, Jim Asabi. We'll bury him, Toto, and we'll ride toward town. Maybe you can find out something there. Later, the Lone Ranger and Toto rode to the edge of town. The masked man waited while his Indian companion went into Woodstock to try to get news. Toto was standing in the back of the cafe when the sheriff entered. Liz Creston back in her office? I reckon she is, Sheriff. You want to see me, Sheriff? Oh, hello, Liz. I was just coming out of the office when I heard you asking for me. What's on your mind? Hey, a cowpoke from the Bar Sea Spread just brought in the horse he found grazing out along the trail. It's the room that young fellow who was working for you was using. You mean Bill Pittman's room? Yeah, I reckon that's his name. I wonder something must have happened to Bill then. He was on the way to my ranch with a message for the cowhands. Oh, I see. I'll get a couple of deputies and backtrack on their own. Maybe we can find out where Bill is and what happened to him. Good, good. I'll ride along with you, Sheriff. I sure hate to think anything happened to Bill. He was one of my best workers. You seem like a nice enough hombre to me. I'll meet you outside in ten minutes, Lane. All right, Sheriff. I'll be there. As the sheriff went out the front door, Toto eased out the back way. The mountain scout rode to the grove outside of town where the Lone Ranger was waiting. Oh, no, Toto. 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 Ranch hand from Barcy spread, bring in horse, can find long trail. It may be horse, young fellow who gets shot was riding. The horse wasn't in sight when he reached the man. That's right. Sheriff talked to Liz Preston. Him say a fellow who worked for her, name of Bill Pitton. Liz get ready to ride with sheriff and deputies to backtrack him on horse. I see. We'll head back to our camp for the time being and wait there. Because of what that dying man said, I, I want to do some thinking. Here's a little (laughs) 
meantime, the sheriff and his two deputies rode back along the trail with Liz Creston. Well, so far we haven't seen anything of them, Liz. I've got a feeling somebody dry goes, Jim Sheriff. So I can't figure out why they should. Hey, hold on, Sheriff. Look there. Oh, oh, oh. oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. <laughs> Here's where something happened. Like where a horse might have thrown somebody. Right. Yeah. For a few minutes, the sheriff studied the ground thoroughly. Then he spoke. Hmm. There's marks of two horses coming down trail and stopping here. Yeah, and there's two sets of footprints. Those well, footprints lead back into the sagebrush over there. That's where I'm sure. Carefully studying the ground, the sheriff and the others finally came to the spot where the Lone Ranger and Toto had made a shallow grave for Bill. Holy mackerel. Looks like somebody made a grave here. Yeah, they even had the mill to put up a little wooden cross over it. Let's get to work, fellas. And the sheriff and his men finally uncovered a body. Yeah. Bill, all right. Whoever did this is going to pay for it. Yep. You sure will, Liz. Might as well fill in the grave again. Let's get going. All right. <laughs> After refilling the grave, the sheriff stood up and spoke. There. That's done. Poor fella. Yeah, right. Go out to the trail and try to pick up the tracks of the two men who brought Bill here. Come on. The trail left by the Lone Ranger and Toto led to the grove of trees on the edge of town. When the sheriff and the others reached the grove, they stopped in puzzlement. Oh, 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 oh. Looks like one of them waited here while the other went on into town. Oh, yeah. Look there, Sheriff. Tracks coming back to the grove from town. Then a trail of two horses circling off to the left and heading back to the hills. Thunder, he's right. Well, Judge might have good a reading sign. All right, let's go. We'll keep on that trail until we catch the armory who murdered poor Bill Pittman. Get up there. Get up there. <laughs> finished lunch. The masked man had done a lot of thinking, and finally he spoke his thoughts to the Indian. That fellow we found dying spoke of trying to leave a gang that you heard him tell that he worked for Liz Creston. That's right. Her tell sheriff she sent young fellow to her ranch with message this morning. Strange. If he were working for Liz, how could he be with... Silver, give warning. Somebody must be approaching the camp. Take your son ready. Look, there's sheriff. Right up gully. Get close to camp. You're making a mistake, Sheriff. You'll be making one if you don't do like I said. Who let's go over here? Two more across over there and get us out of here. Mm. Hey, Mike. You see him now. That's all right, Sheriff. All right, Sheriff. We've dropped our guns. All right, everybody. Close your arms. Here. 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 Under a mere shirt, no an Indian. We're not outlaws. We expected you to deny it. And I suppose you deny killing and burying Bill Pittman, too. We didn't kill him. We heard a shot and then found him lying on the trail. What? Was he dead when you found him? He died a moment after we got there. The only decent thing to do was to bury him. Hmm. For my money, Sheriff, I'd say we found Bill's killers. I right, sure he's lying when he says they didn't shoot him. What I told you is the truth. Who'd believe a mad sow who's like you, mister? Yes, Bill was one of my best friends, both in town and at my ranch. For his sake, I want to see justice done. Right. You kept Bill Pittman very busy, I Liz. <laughs> he even knows my name. Well, to answer your question, Bill wasn't one to quibble about working hours. He was always around when I wanted him. I see. Enough of this, Gavin. We're taking you and that Indian into jail. And by thunder, you hang for murder. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scene, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Tonto to continue. It was a tense moment as the Lone Ranger and Tonto stood facing the sheriff, who with Liz and the two deputies were still mounted. The four horses are drawn together in a group. The sheriff spoke. Jed, go get their horses over there and bring them here. I notice they're still saddled. All right, Jed. Get it. Get it. When Jed brings those horses, both of you mount and ride out to the trail in front of us. Savvy? Just as you say. Oh, over oh, oh, there. Oh. The deputies stopped Silver and Scout just alongside the Lone Ranger and Toto. As he dropped the reins and started forward to join the others, the Lone Ranger whistled sharply, and the great horse Silver suddenly leaped forward, slamming against the deputy's horse and swinging around in front of the Lone Ranger. In that split second, the masked man quickly reached down and grabbed his gun from the ground. Then as the deputy's horse reared and bumped against the other horses, causing momentary confusion, the Lone Ranger and Toto covered the group with their guns. They have their guns! As the sheriff aimed his gun, the Lone Ranger shot, creaking the sheriff's wrist. Now all of you... Do as I say. Grumbling about the quick turn of events, the sheriff and the others threw their guns aside. Then the Lone Ranger and Toto quickly mounted and headed toward the trail of a fast jump. Stick on of you, quick. I'll get him, sheriff. Man alive, I never saw such fast movement and such fast shooting. And now they've gone through the trees out of gun range. Here's that gun. Look, oh, yes. Now that you saw them and know they've killed Bill Pittman, let's go back and get a big posse. Then we'll pick up their trail and make sure they don't try any more tricks to get away. Well, sure. Good idea, Miz. Let's get the posse now. Get up there. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. The room went and taking care to cover their tracks cleverly. Then they stopped in a secluded hollow. Oh, oh, yeah. oh easy. Oh, easy. Oh, easy. Oh, easy. Oh, that pretty close came up. Yes, I know. What will you do now? Liz Creston was somewhat anxious when she asked if Pittman was dead when we found him. At that moment, too, she was more or less implying that we did find him already dying. But then did she say she thinks we kill her? She did change, of course. The way she said, was he dead when you found him, makes me think she knew he'd been shot by the time we got to him. Then you think... Before I become definite about what I think, Toto, I want to investigate that ranch of hers. But fellas say him try to quit gang. Him speak of special deputy. From what Liz said, I'd say Bill Pittman didn't have time to do anything more than work for. Uh, maybe she has something to do with outlaw gang. That could be. That's what we're going to find out. All right, let's go. Come on, let's go. It was early afternoon when the Lone Ranger and Toto, leaving their horses in a hidden spot nearby, went on foot to look around at Liz Creston's ranch. They moved cautiously and soon managed to reach the bunkhouse without being seen by anyone. As they crossed under the bunkhouse window, they heard voices inside. Well, Mike, uh, you're getting back to town. Liz will be expecting me to make a report. Well, I noticed you put some of the stuff with your own. Why'd you do that, Sandy? <laughs> Good, sir. I happen to know he won't be with us any longer. What makes you think that? I've got my reasons. Where'd you see him last? Hey, uh, this morning, just before I let Liz off, is come out here and tell you about that special deputy who's coming on the stage tomorrow. Well, I've been here too long already. I'll get back to town now. I'll see you later. Come on. Come on. Toto, that man's been here for hours. He couldn't know about Bill's death. Yet he knows Pittman isn't coming back here. Ah, uh, you must speak of special deputy coming on stage tomorrow. Too. Yes, I heard that too. One, well, we're following to town. Yes, yes. The sheriff, with Liz and his two deputies, returned to town. Liz entered the cafe and went to her office. A short time later, Savage came in. Well, Savage, where you been keeping yourself all this time? Out at the ranch. I stayed and had lunch with the boys after I told them about the gang raiding the stage tomorrow. Well, I settled the score with Bill like you told me to, Liz. Yeah, yeah, I know. But how come two hombres got to him even before he died? How do you know that? A cowpoke brought in Bill's horse. Yeah. I went out there with the sheriff and his deputy. We found a grave where the two hombres buried Bill. Later, we surprised them in their camp, but they got away. I shot him as he went over a rise in the trail. And as I was going to ride on and make sure, I heard the horses coming, so I beat it before they could see me. 
What do they look like, Liz? Masked hombre riding a white stallion and an Indian who had a paint. Yeah, sounds like a couple of owl hoots, huh? <laughs> well, it looks with us. They got the blame, right? <laughs> yeah. The sheriff is getting a big party right now to go trail him again. <laughs> Now, Savage, here's a pencil and paper. Yeah. I'll draw a map showing just how we'll go after that stage tomorrow to get that payroll. Unknown to Liz and Savage, Tonto had followed Savage into the cafe and had gone unobserved to a small table near the office door. The door had fallen ajar slightly, so that fortunately Tonto had overheard what was being said. He quietly left the cafe and met the Lone Ranger at a prearranged spot among the trees behind the cafe. After hearing what Tonto had learned, the Lone Ranger spoke. Liz Creston is behind Bill Pittman's death. He must be the leader of the outlaw gang we've come to find. Ah, uh, and plan to hold up stage tomorrow. Yes, I want you to send a telegram to our friend Marshal Jones in Pecos. I'll write it down for you. For a few moments, the Lone Ranger wrote on a piece of paper which he had taken from his pocket. Later. Marshal Jones, take those. Outlaw gang, plan to rob stage here tomorrow. Third, you mentioned the special deputy. He telegraphed Sheriff at Woodstock at once to identify me to him. LR. Didn't take long to get the reply, Tonto. Wait near the telegraph office until you see the telegram delivered to the sheriff. Then go bring him here to me. Let uh, me do that. Let me go right now. Good. <laughs> Some time later, as the sheriff was just about to leave his office, a man came in with a telegram. Well, Jed, I reckon the posse is ready to ride now. Yeah, they're waiting, Sheriff. Sheriff, I got a telegram for you. Telegram, well, well, give it here. Yo, here it is. Let's see. Sheriff Tate, Woodstock. Received word, gang in your vicinity, plan to rob stage tomorrow. A masked man riding a white stallion accompanied by an Indian will contact you. They are to be trusted and can lead you to gang. Marshal Jones, take it. Doggone, did you hear that, Jeff? Hey, Sheriff, those are the two hombres we're getting ready to trade. Yeah, but it looks like we made a mistake, like the masked man said. Now, how in thunder am I supposed to go by... Hey, look, the Indian. You get a message from Marshal Jones? Yes, and if he says you and that masked hombre are all right, it must be so. Now, take me to him. i got to see him right away. Ah, uh, you come. Come on, Jeff. A few minutes later, Tonto led the sheriff and deputy to the grove behind the cafe, where the lone ranger was waiting. Hello, sheriff. Sorry about your wrist. Howdy, mister. The Indian told me who you are. I'm the one that should be sorry. Well, let's forget it. Sheriff, we know who killed Bill Pittman. We feel certain we know the leader of the outlaw gang has been operating around here. Great day. So if there'll be no question of proof, I have a plan to fix them. Uh, here's what I suggest. <laughs> the Lone Ranger put his plan into effect. Meanwhile, Savage was still in the office with Liz Creston, talking over the plans for the next day. Now we got everything straight, Savage. Yeah. You'll lead the boys, and afterwards come right back here to me. Have the others go back to the range. All right, Liz. Good hey, luck. Masked man coming in the back door. Oh, yeah. As he walked slowly into the office, the Lone Ranger left the back door slightly ajar. Well, what do you want here? You're crazy to think you can get away with this when a party is leaving the table. Yes? I want to join your gang, Liz. Well, if all the nerve, listen to that. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yes, you do. You could use a good gunslinger. At the same time, you'd be sure I wouldn't talk out of turn. What do you mean by that? Yes, yes. What do you mean, mister? I told you Pittman wasn't dead yet when we got to him. Remember? Well, what about it? He talked before he died. Plus, more since he wasn't dead yet and still conscious, he was in the position to see who shot him. You mean he saw me before? Shut up, Betty! <laughs> Look, do I get to join your gang or not? Yeah. You better let him join, Liz. It'd be safer if he was one of us. So, Bill Pittman told you it was our gang, huh? The squealer got what he deserved. We give lead to quitters, mister. What's more, Pittman wasn't much as an outlaw anyway. On the bank job we pulled here a month ago, he was shaking in his boots. I'm used to tough hombres working with the gang. If necessary, we plug an hombre who tries to get in our way, like the guard on the leaping stage a while back. So you see, mister, if you do join... Hey, the sheriff, I'll do it, please. Oh, 
Don't shoot, mister. Sheriff, Sheriff, arrest this hombre. He tried to hold us up, and we know he killed Pittman. Shut up, please. Me and my men heard all that was said. We were standing just outside the partly open door. Now, look at here, Sheriff. I, I sent a posse out to your ranch to get the rest of the gang. Hold on. You mean just because I strung this man hombre along with a lot of talk, stolen for time? I you... believe everything I heard. What I didn't hear, I could take his word for, Liz. I think you and your men have things under control, Sheriff. Hey, hey, I wrote a hidden ticket. The posse got all the others and they're bringing them in. Good. They all think Liz did some squealing and they talk plenty. That's fine, fine. I'll leave with Toto now. Our gang is one menace. The West won't have to worry about it any longer. All right, let's go, Toto. Uh, Adios. Sheriff, yeah, I, I don't savvy all this at all. There's a masked owl who can walk right away with us. That's even... one army that no ornery crooks like you ever savvy. What? Smart as they might be, he always goes in one better and rigs the West with more sneaking killers and crooks than all the lawmen around here do. You see, he's the Lone Ranger. George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger 